Beef with broccoli is one of the most popular Chinese American foods of all time, and it's one of my favorite things to order. Mm. But you ever try to make it at home and it comes out like a little dry, maybe a little chewy? Just not even close to a Chinese takeout restaurant. But when you order takeout, it's like tender and it's got almost like a silky texture to it. That's because there's a secret technique that Chinese restaurants use to quickly tenderize beef, pork, chicken, any kind of meat really, turning them into tender, velvety pieces of glistening meat that we all love. And today we're gonna learn how to do it to make some very good beef with broccoli at home. Now the technique in question is called velveting. Now velveting does two things, actually does three. It helps tenderize the meat, it helps retain its juices, and it helps create that silky texture. It also gives us an opportunity to flavor the meat and we can do it all at the same time, which is nice. Now right here I have a piece of flank steak. I'm pretty sure normally a Chinese restaurant would use like a sirloin. Now the first important thing is to make sure you don't don't do these two things. We do not want to cut the beef too thick and we do not want to cut it too long so that the pieces have to almost fold over each other to fit in your mouth. And so with a flank steak, you've got the grains running down the meat. And to make sure we don't cut them too long, I'm going to slice this flank steak in half. Now this is a, a full flank steak cut in half. And then I'm going to cut this in half again. Now to get it to the shape I want, I'm going to find the grains and first cut along them. So now the length of that is cut in half. So once you slice it thin, it's a nice piece of meat that will fit into your mouth easily without you ever having to worry about it becoming too long. Now you can go ahead and just cut thin strips, not shaved, very thin. Say you wanted shredded beef, you could slice this whole chunk in half lengthwise, and then every cut you would make would be more of a thin strip of beef, which is actually how I used to request it when I would order takeout as a kid. That's about a quarter of a whole flank steak. That's enough for one portion, which is what we're gonna work on today. You see, I don't ever think making Chinese takeout at home is a replacement for ordering Chinese takeout. It's a good thing if you've got some flank steak to use or a chicken to use up. It's a utilization sort of recipe. But I don't pretend to make it better than my favorite Chinese restaurant does. They work a little bit of magic back there. They've got the right gear and equipment and they know how to do this quick and fast. So say I'm ordering it for a bunch of people, I can't make it as fast or as good as I can when I order it. Usually when it's cooking for one or two people, People, that's when this is a good thing to do at home. Into a bowl that we're going to marinate the beef in. Now, like I said, the velveting does a few things. It tenderizes, it helps with texture and juiciness, and also flavors the beef. So we're gonna do all those things. And first thing is the baking soda. Basically what this does is it raises the pH of the meat, making it harder for those proteins to connect to each other when they cook, making them a little bit more looser, therefore more tender when they're done cooking. I'm not a big science guy, just know the rough idea and that's good enough for me. And so we're gonna need one quarter of a teaspoon. Then we're gonna go in with some salt. A teaspoon, quarter teaspoon of salt. Not too much because we have a lot of other salty ingredients, but it still does need salt. Give it a mix. Next up, about a half teaspoon of some soy sauce, light soy sauce, and then another half teaspoon of dark soy sauce. Dark soy sauce kind of goes more for the color. It adds a deeper color. The light soy sauce is more for the flavor and the salt. And you can just sort of eyeball these things, but if you want, it's a half teaspoon. Also need a little bit of black pepper. And then about half teaspoon, teaspoon of sugar. A little half teaspoon of Xiaojing wine. If you have an Asian market, you can get it there. About a half teaspoon. And then a half teaspoon of oyster sauce. You really just want like very tiny bits of everything just so that the meat kind of sucks it up, but it's like never really sitting in a pool of marinade. And then we're gonna go in with some cornstarch. And that cornstarch is gonna help with that velvety texture as well. And we need just a half teaspoon and we wanna mix it and almost massage it with our hands until that cornstarch sort of hydrates and you can almost feel the fibers of the meat loosening up. So now we're just gonna let this sit for about 20, 30 minutes while we prepare the rest of the ingredient. Before I do though, I forget, hit it with a little glisten of oil. I like sesame oil. Right before you put it in, sort of locks in that sheen a little bit. Regular oil will do also. Just a half, like a half teaspoon, nothing too crazy. Next, we gotta deal with the broccoli and the aromatics, which are gonna be a little bit of ginger and three cloves of garlic. We'll deal with the broccoli in a second. 
First for the garlic, you just smash them. Get that skin off. Get the little root end off. Cut them in half, smash. Breaking them down to smaller sizes allows so when you smash them, they don't kind of explode all over the place. And when you're able to smash them fairly hard, they almost sort of mint on their own. And you just kind of have to then run your knife through it a few more times to get it into a nice fine mint. Next onto the ginger. Now we don't need all this ginger. We just need a little bit of nub and this guy's a little old, so I'm just gonna kind of cut around the old bits. We really don't need a ton. We're gonna see the grains kind of run down this way. So if we slice down them, it's gonna be a nice easy slice. A ginger is very fibrous, so when you cut it with the grain, you get these nicer slices. And then we can easily just stack these slices up, slice them into very fine sticks, almost like a julienne. And then just like we would any other dice, turn that stack of sticks so it's perpendicular to the knife and then slice into a very fine mince. You never wanna really chomp on any big bits of ginger in any dish, really. And then get that into the bowl with the garlic. And for the broccoli, we're just going to start to just kind of cut florets right off the stalk. That's plenty for one serving. So we can hold on to this. This second half is enough for a second serving if you're serving two. Now to turn these bigger florets into nice smaller florets, we're gonna take our knife, cut down until you're right where the blade meets the flower. And you can kind of just twist your knife and they'll kind of come out a more natural shape. And say that's even too big right there. Again, same thing, twist, peel. Twist, peel. Now you want broccoli that's got a tiny bit of bite in the center but isn't overcooked and isn't too raw. So you really gotta nail the size of the broccoli. Broccoli, aromatics, prepped. And remember the key to cooking Chinese recipe or a lot of other Asian recipes is to prepare everything in advance because it all comes together quickly on the stove. If you're running around chopping things last minute, you're setting yourself up for disaster. Get everything ready. And we almost have everything ready, we just need to make the sauce. Now back when I was a kid, all I would ever order was beef with broccoli, chicken with broccoli in a brown sauce. Which I'm pretty sure is like the standard when you order chicken with broccoli. I just used it to distinguish it from like a garlic sauce or one of the other sauces. So for me a brown sauce starts with a little bit of good chicken broth. And by a little bit I mean maybe about two tablespoons. We can always add a little bit later if we need more. We also have about a tablespoon of cornstarch here for our slurry. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon to that, or as much as I need to create a nice little slurry. Maybe a tablespoon and a half. Mix it all up and it looks a little thick, so I'm just gonna drizzle in a touch more of the stock. I just want the slurry to be a little runny. Now that's ready to go. Now to the broth, about two tablespoons of oyster sauce. One tablespoon of the light soy sauce, one tablespoon of the dark, and then about one and a half to two tablespoons, if you like it on the sweeter side, of sugar. And then finally, a touch of MSG, just for the nostalgia. There's nothing really wrong with it, but you don't have to add it if you don't want. Just like a quarter teaspoon. So now we've got our sauce. This is all the ingredients prepped. We've got our marinated, tenderized, flavored beef, our broccoli ready to be blanched, our aromatics ready to be sauteed and incorporated into the mix, and then to finish our sauce and our cornstarch slurry. We're also gonna need a little bit more of the Shaoxing cooking wine, a little bit of sesame oil that we're gonna throw together in the pan, and a little chicken stock just in case we may need to adjust some things, which I don't foresee us needing to do. So now we're gonna start by blanching the broccoli. So I've got a little pot of water coming up to a boil over here, which leads us into talking about some of the cookware. Now when it comes to making a dish like beef with broccoli at home, the key is a pan that's gonna retain heat. So my go-to is the carbon steel pan from our sponsor today, Maiden. Maiden's award-winning carbon steel frying pans are made in France and Sweden by the best craftsmen and women who have been producing carbon steel pans for more than 300 years. And it's the perfect hybrid between a cast iron pan and a stainless steel pan. Like a cast iron pan, it has amazing heat retention and heat control, but like a stainless steel pan, it's light enough to maneuver and toss in your hand like this, and it heats up quickly. And like a cast iron pan, the more you use it, the more it naturally seasons and becomes almost like a nonstick surface. And the carbon steel collection can go from the stovetop to the oven, and even in an open fire up to 1200 degrees if that's the kind of way you like to cook. And if you have the space 
case, which I don't. They have amazing carbon steel woks for the home with a flat bottom. That would be perfect if you like making Chinese food often at home like this. So to save you money and to get geared up with some of Maiden's amazing carbon steel products, head on down to my link in the description and let's jump back into the recipe. Now that the water is up to a boil, we can season it generously with salt then add the broccoli to the boiling water to quickly blanch and then set a timer for 60 seconds. If your broccoli is bigger, you may need 90. Again, we want the broccoli to be cooked, but with a little bit of a bite at the center of the stalk. Nothing worse than overcooked broccoli in a dish like this. After 60 seconds, drain the broccoli and then shock them in cold water to stop the cooking. A small batch like this, you could just rinse under cold water. Now back at the stove, we can get the carbon steel pan on the burner on high heat and let that get hot so that the pan starts slightly smoking. Then we can add a ring of oil around the pan enough to coat it and then add the beef. And it's vital not to overcrowd the beef. Another reason why Chinese food at home for a large group doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So spread them out so they make contact with the pan and usually a Chinese restaurant would stir constantly and that's because the gear is much hotter. So they toss it constantly so nothing burns. We're working with weaker gears, so we're gonna let that meat sear for about 30 seconds to a minute, and then with a spatula, scoop underneath the meat and flip it. Color is great, but it's not vital. We just wanna cook the beef hard and fast. Should cook no more than one to one and a half minutes. Then strain out the beef, and catch the oil in a bowl. We just need it about two thirds of the way cooked at this point. Get the pan back on the stove and lower the heat to medium high. And then add the garlic and ginger and some of that oil back into the pan and stir and cook for about 30 seconds. Then turn the heat off, deglaze with a few tablespoons of the Shaoxing wine. Turn the heat back on high and then after about 10 seconds, add the beef back into the pan and toss it with the aromatics. Add about a teaspoon of sesame oil and then add the broccoli back into the pan. Then we're gonna add the sauce, but not all of it. We wanna add a little bit at a time, just enough to glaze the beef. We can always add more. Toss together, see if there's enough sauce. You wanna look for everything getting glazed. I add a touch more and then about three quarters of the slurry, reserving some just in case I need it later. Toss it all together, stirring until the sauce is glazed and coating the beef and broccoli and it's shining and glistening and looking like beef and broccoli should. Now to plate, obviously goes great with some good steamed rice, but works great without if you're watching carbs. Just pile it high on a nice big white plate, just like a classic Chinese restaurant growing up, and you've got something surprisingly equivalent to your favorite beef and broccoli. Tender, velvety, glistening meat, perfectly cooked glazed broccoli. It's fast, easy to make, and is packed with flavor. It's simply one of the greatest dishes of all time. That to me looks just like a normal beef with broccoli I would get from Chinese takeout restaurant. Tender, it's saucy but not too saucy. Tons of flavor, glazing the vegetable and the beef, mm. and the velveting. That is the secret that you've been waiting for your whole life to make Chinese food taste good at home. First recipe of the year, happy new year. Surprise, surprise, it's not Italian. If you want the recipe, the link's gonna be down in the description. That's all that I have today. Gear up for a whole new year, because I'm gonna see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.